In this video, I'll do a derivation where I can use the derived rules. Now here in my list, I have the derived rules being CDJ, conditional disjunction, De Morgan's, negation of conditional, negation of biconditional, and separation of cases. You will never see me use CDJ and separation of cases. That doesn't mean you can't, you're welcome to. I just consider these situational rules. The derived rules that I focus on are De Morgan's negation of conditional and negation of biconditional. And these rules allow you to move a negation into a bracket where the, connect the connective is one of our binary connectives. And this is a really powerful tool, and it makes all rules derivations far simpler than the basic rules derivations. In this derivation, we're going to see an example of the fifth sort of solving method for derivations, which is showing something nice. And so we'll see that in action pretty soon. Let's get started. Always start with your show line. Show negation w or t. Now, maybe if this was a basic rules derivation, I would start asking about things like proof structure and all this. But in derived rules, it doesn't matter. You just go straight to show line breakdown, and which always finishes with an assume ID, and then you immediately apply your derived rules. So this is the negation of a disjunction, and of course that's the De Morgan's rule. So I get negation, negation, W, and negation, T, and that is two De Morgans. Be careful, you are not allowed to say that the result is W and negation T, that does not follow uh, from two De Morgans. You can also not say this, W and negation T, two De Morgans double negate. That's not true, because if you had double negated it, it would have actually looked like this. That's the double negation of the De Morgans, and that's not what you meant. If you want to do the shortcut to this, you would have to say something really annoying. Your code would be, to De Morgan's simplify, double negate, simplify, and then adjoin. That is the true code to get all of this, but in my opinion, that's just a waste of time. You can get rid of the negations whenever you want. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that mess because it's going to be in the way. And let's go back. All I did was De Morgan's this. Now I will get the parts I need. W. 3 simplify double negate, far better to do it then. And of course now I get negation t, and that is 3 simplify. What this has done is it's taken care of my line 2, my line 3, and I only have to focus really on the fact that I have w and negation t. All rules derivations are always like this. They blow everything up so that you end up just with a bunch of atomics. Now when I look at my actual derivation, I have not really a lot of options to do. Premise 1 is a disjunction, and premise 2 is a conditional. So I'll just highlight those so we're clear. That's that, and that's that. And there are no automatic moves, and there's no proof structure, there's no contradiction generators. So in these cases, I need to show something nice. Now, remember from my skills video, showing something nice is essentially always related to the disjunction or to the conditional. And what we want to do is we want to show something so that we can use a rule. One option is to show this antecedent so that I can modus ponens, or I could show the negation of this so I can modus tollens. Uh, the other options are related to the disjunction. I show the negation of one side to MTP to get the affirmation of the other. So once I know this, I know what I'm looking for. In fact, I don't even need a show line at all. I realize I have W and negation T here, so I'm looking for the Ws and Ts. Well, here's a W. That's actually pretty straightforward, because this w is part of a disjunction right here. And how do I build a disjunction? Well, you just need one side, and you use addition. So I can just get w or x, and that is for addition. And then I immediately do my modus ponens, and I get negation t by conditional s. That's as good. 6 premise 2 modus ponens. And now, because this is a negation of biconditional, I can actually just use my negation of biconditional rule to get that. 7, that's messy, messier than normal, I suppose, uh, negation of biconditional. So I could split this up into my two directions. I'm not going to bother, though. I know it's sitting there, and I know I can just come back to it and split it whenever I want. Rarely do you want both directions, so I'm just going to wait and figure out which direction I really want. 
Okay, so I've taken care of this premise, that's great, but I still have to take care of premise 1. And you can see that for premise 1, I'm sort of stuck. Uh, for premise 1, I don't actually have uh, any sort of um, guidance on what to do because I don't have either side, I don't know what to do. But remember, if it's a disjunction, there's only one thing you can do, you can only MTP it, which means I need to show the negation of one of the sides. So I have two options. My options for the show line are show r arrow s, or I can show p arrow not t. Now look, why isn't it negation negation r arrow s? Because showing negation negation is silly. It's far easier to show r arrow s and then add the two negations in front after. Same story here. I'm not showing negation negation p arrow not t. Because I know if I just show p arrow not t, then I can just add the double two negations there. So I look at what I got here. What am I more likely to get? The r arrow s or the p arrow not t? Well, over here, um, I have, uh, oops, that's meant to be a star, sorry. I have w and I have negation t as singletons, so, or atomics, so it seems that this is the easier one. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I will just show out of nowhere, p arrow not t. And what I've done is I've demonstrated the fifth derivation solving skill of showing something nice. I showed the negation of one side of the disjunction here. Now this solves instantaneously. Uh, I know I in my last video for basic rules uh, I was actually doing uh, some shortcuts. I'm going to do a, a shortcut here. You could of course do the full breakdown where you assume cd, show consequent, uh, assume id, and so on. But the shortcut is so fast, it's worth demonstrating. I know that what I need to do to show p arrow not t is ultimately get not t. But if I have not t already, I can just do this. I can say negation t, that's line 5. I repeat it, and then I say conditional derivation. Because I'm essentially just showing that, hey, not t follows. So therefore, p arrow not t follows. So from here, I've done this check. And why did I do this? So I could double negate it and modus tollendo ponens this first premise. So I'm going to do that, and I immediately get negation r arrow s. That is line 9, double negate, premise 1, mtp. So that's really nice, because this is the negation of a conditional. Fortunately, there's a rule for that, and it's called negation of conditional. This rule doesn't need to be memorized. You already know it. When is a conditional statement false? When the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. That is line 11, negation of conditional. Now immediately, I could simplify, but I actually can sort of guess that the R is useless. R doesn't appear anywhere else in my derivation, but the negation S does. So I'll take that negation S out. 12, simplify. What's left? Well, that line that I starred over here, that I knew I was going to use later, and now I can see. I have negation s, and there's negation s here, so it makes sense that I want the negation s in the antecedent. So I'll get negation s, arrow t. By the way, if you guessed wrong, and you, you know, split the biconditional the wrong way, it really doesn't matter. It's not worth erasing. It's probably slower to erase than just to finish the line. So I'll say 8 biconditional to the conditional. Then I'll modus ponens to get t. 13, 14, modus ponens, and now I look, there's a t, and I look, 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 oh, there's my negation t, and we are in the exact same subderivation, so there's no need to repeat. So I'm just going to say line 5, line 15, i, d, box and close. All rules derivations are often like this, everything sort of just blows up. The only time when it wouldn't and you need to invoke a show line, it's going to look like one of these two options. You have a disjunction or you have a conditional, and you need to get the antecedent or the negation of the consequent to MP or MT, or you need to get the negation of one side of the disjunction so you can MTP. The trick that I showed here is that if you it's already negated, don't show the double negated version of it, just show the empty normal version of it, unnegated, because then you can just add two negations afterwards.